Hi, my name's Rich. I've been setting up ambulatories for eight and a half years. I'm gonna go ahead and show you my technique. It uses no collodion, EC2, or tensive, and I only lose about a one electrode every 25 runs or so. So with that, let me go ahead and show you the equipment. So here's just your standard new prep 1020. I use this cover roll stretch tape that I cut into three by five pieces there. One uh, roll of gauze. These are the nets I use. I typically use size seven for most of my patients. If their head circumference is about 60 or bigger, I'll go with a size eight. If it's lower than 53, I'll go with a size six. And I usually cut them at about this length, which is about 16 inches long. Over here, just surgical tape. The transparent works best for me. I use these red dot um, EKG leads. And then the, for the electrodes, I use these Cadwell electrodes. I like them because they're very thin and that um, alleviates a lot of the tension coming from the electrode itself. In fact, if you look at the difference here, I don't know if you can see it, but the brown one is the one that I use. It's about twice as thin as your standard electrode, which means you're gonna get a lot less tension coming from the wire itself. You'll get a lot less pull off the electrode. So the first step is to put the net around the patient's neck. What I'm gonna do is ask the patient to help me. We're gonna drop this around your neck, grab the front please, and drop that around. Then pull the patient's hair outside of the neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do my electrodes. First, I'm gonna scrub the spot with the uh, new prep. Then place a bead of paste in the spot. Then I'll take my electrode with some more paste, push it on there. Then I'm going to squinch any extra paste back onto the electrode itself. Then I'm going to take my tape, take off half of the back, place it right in the front, and just pull it straight back. Now when you place your tape, don't put too much in front of the electrode. The tape does its best work when it's covering more wire than in the front. Okay, so before I bundle all the wires, I want you to see that all my wires are aimed at a point somewhere between PZ and OZ. Now I'm going to go ahead and bundle the wires. What you do is you need to isolate the wires from the hair, making sure there's no hair where you're going to be taping them. Then about two inches, you want to grab all of the wires and then spread them out like so. Take one piece of tape, put it right over the top, again spread them out. We want as much of as many of the wires actually touching the tape as possible. And then just fold it over so it's nice and flat. Then you're going to take it again, roll it up, and then put another piece of tape around it. Trying to keep as much hair out of there as possible. And that's going to ensure that not only is each wire touching the tape, but they're all securely and tightly held together. If you notice, I can just take one wire and it's going to distribute all the pull amongst the other wires. And that's kind of the goal. We don't want one wire to just yank out because it got caught on something. So now I'm going to go ahead and wrap the patient's head in some gauze. First, I'm going to start above the left ear, come around the forehead. I'm only going to lay it on top. I'm not pulling it tightly at all. Come around the back, nice and low. Then I'm going to make a second pass. This time when I come around the back, I'm going to come under the patient's hair. And I'm going to catch as much of A1 and A2 as possible in this pass. Just like so. I'm going to cut it off right here. Now when I tape it, I'm going to pull the bottom nice and tight. That's to give A1 and A2 a little extra support. And then put a second piece of tape just to hold the rest of it in place. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull the net over the patient's head. First I'll uh, let the patient know 
that it's going to cover their face for about a minute, but I will cut a slit for the face later. I'm going to grab about half to three quarters of the net. I'm going to pull it out and over. Then I'm going to take all the slack out of the neck area right here. I'm going to pull out a little bit and just with my fingers keep pulling it until all that slack is gone. Also want to make sure that there's enough covering the neck here. If you've pulled it too much like I did here, you're just going to take it, pull it back down. Now I'm going to cut a slit in the back here. What I want to do is because I want the the wire braid to originate somewhere below PZ, I want to cut a slit in the neck in the net back here. So what I'm going to do, take my scissors, I'm going to cut about three to four inches, being sure not to cut the hair. Incidentally, it's also very important to make sure that the net is straight and that it's not kind of going off to the side. If it is, then you need to go ahead and straighten it. So if the net was laying like this, we need to pull it back over here. Now I'm going to tie it off. What I want to do is isolate the wire braid, take the two ends of the net, and tie it off in the back, making sure not to include as much any hair, if at all possible. So I'm going to tie it like so. Again, making sure as much hair does not get in that knot as possible. Now when you get to the point where it's pretty much sitting on top of the hair, what you're going to want to do is tell the patient you're going to uh, pull back and they need to resist you and you're going to give it one more tighten. Okay, so I want you to resist me, like so. Now I'm going to take the, uh, the two ends and I'm going to tie it over the top. But I want to make sure that this piece of tape is inside. So now I'm going to tie it on top of the wire braid, just like that. Finally, to get rid of this, you're just going to go ahead and pull that down and tie it one more time. You're going to make a knot, pull that little excess in between there, and tie it down one final time with a nice good hard pull. Now I'm going to cut a hole for the face. What I'm going to do is cut a slit just below the bottom lip and I'm going to do this in one cut. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut about two triangles on each side at about a 45 degree angle. Then I'm just going to take the net, pull it up to uncover the whole face. Now to adjust it, we're going to want to make additional cuts right at about the midpoint from the forehead to the chin, which would be about right there. That's just to get it out of the eyes. Right. And you're only going to want to go about one triangle at a time. The smaller this hole is, the more stable it'll be on the face. Also, you want to make sure you get the excess out by just taking your hand underneath the net and just kind of walking it up so that it doesn't slide later. Okay. Then just make sure it's covering the forehead completely. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the ears out. Now when you cut the ear holes, wherever you cut it, it's going to shift up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fingers where her ear is, I'm going to shift about half an ear down and cut from there. And then I'm just going to walk it up a little bit into position. That way it's not going to slide out of position while she's got it for the three days. Okay. 
Finally, I'm going to make a couple of relief cuts over FP1 and FP2. That's just to prevent any uh, skin breakages from there being too much pressure right over the electrode. Okay. So the reason why this setup works is because the knot is in the back of the head. That means the tension is coming around the head instead of towards the top. If the knot's on the top of the head, the net's always going to want to pull towards the knot. So if you put it here, then you know the forehead is going to want to come back here, the forehead portion of the net. Whereas in the back, you can see it's pulling around and it's going to act more like a headband. The second reason it works well is because the wire braid is basically clamped between two knots. And on top of that, it's got that little piece of tape that's around the wire blade that uh, works as a brake. So I can sit here and pull on this all day long and no electrodes are going to move. So that's the setup. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'll check from time to time. Thanks for watching. Bye.